Hey, I'm Lauren from That Sage, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add life and movement to your food photos using Photoshop composites. One of the most powerful ways to tell a story in your food photography is to have several pairs of hands in your photo interacting with your scene in some way. But how do you create those kinds of photos when you're the only person in your studio and you only have two hands? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you today. Photoshop composites are a super easy way to get really creative in your photos. They'll allow you to create images that you just can't straight out of the camera. So I'm gonna take you step by step through how to set up your scene, what equipment you'll need, and then how to edit your composite together. I've also created you a free step-by-step -step PDF guide that you can refer back to anytime. So click the link in the description to download that right now. If you're not subscribed already, then don't forget to hit that button and let's jump right into this tutorial. So the way a composite works is by taking several photos of the same scene with your hands in a different position each time. Then when we get to the Photoshop part, we're gonna be layering all these photos on top of each other to create the composite. We need to make sure that everything in the photo is consistent. So that means your position, the lighting, and your camera settings. The only variable should be the different hand positions. So the equipment that you're gonna need for this shoot is a camera, a light source, a tripod, and your props and food. A tripod is absolutely essential when creating this kind of composite because it's essential that everything in all the photos we take lines up exactly. I like to set my camera up on a tripod and then tether to my laptop so I can see exactly how my photo is looking on a big screen. When it comes to lighting, you can use either natural or artificial, but when creating composites, I prefer artificial as it allows me to keep the lighting consistent across all the photos. So go ahead and start by laying out all your props in your desired shape and then adding your food. Next, adjust your camera settings to get the exposure you want and set your focus. For this photo, my camera settings are ISO 100, f4.5 for aperture and a shutter speed of 1 15th of a second. I always use manual focus for my photos because I really like to get them tack sharp. Because I'm tethering to take this photo, I can see a preview of my histogram in the bottom right of my screen, which is showing me that the majority of the tones in my image are falling within the bright range, but I don't have any white or black clipping. Then set your camera on a timer and take as many different shots as you like, moving around your scene with your hands in different positions. For this example, I'm going with three different looks. So once you've taken your photos, it's time to move on to editing. So jumping into the editing part of this video. Now I always start by editing my photos in Lightroom. It's just my editing program of choice for my food photography. I find it really easy to work with and I think you can do a lot. So the first thing that I do is upload my photos in here and give them a quick edit. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on everything that I've done to these photos to edit them because I really wanna spend this video focusing on the Photoshop part. But I just wanna give you a quick tip on how to edit in Lightroom for this kind of image. Now, as I mentioned before with the tripod, making sure that every single shot you take is at the same angle with the same camera settings, the same goes for your initial Lightroom edits. So you really want every single one of these images to have the same edits applied so that they're really consistent. So what I like to do is start with one of the photos, it doesn't really matter which one, and I go through and edit the photo in detail. So that would be all of my settings that I wanna play with and also any local brush ad adjustments. So on this photo, I just added a little bit of a brush on these two oranges here because they were looking a little bit dark. Um, then what I do is with this photo selected, I hold down shift and click to the end and then click sync. And then it will bring up this window which allows you to choose which of your edits you're gonna to apply to all the rest of your photos. Most of the time I would untick the local adjustments because those would be very specific to the particular photo that I was editing. But in this case, because all of the things in the photo are in exactly the same place, we can carry over the local adjustments as well. 
So I just press synchronize and then what it's gonna do is apply all of the edits I made to the first photo to the next two as well. So then you'll see as I go through them, they look really consistent and it's only the position of the hands that is changing. So once you've done that, go ahead and export all of your images and then we're gonna open them up in Photoshop. So I already exported these. Um, as you can see, they, they're all exported here. You can export them to whatever size you like. I like to export them full size from Lightroom and then resize with Photoshop, but you can really choose, it doesn't matter. So then what we're gonna do to start creating our composite is select all three images or as many as you have. And I'm gonna to choose to open these with Photoshop. And what that's gonna do is open three tabs in Photoshop, each one containing our image. So you're just gonna pick one to be your base layer. It doesn't really matter which one you use as your base layer, so I'm just gonna go with the first one. So in order to create the composite, what we need to do is start adding the other photos as new layers in our original image. So I'm gonna double click on this layer and turn it into a layer zero rather than a background. And then immediately I'm just gonna add a new layer on top. So then I'm gonna open up my second photo. I'm gonna do a Command A or a Control A if you're on a Windows, and then a Control C or Command C. And then I'm, with this layer selected, I'm gonna do a Command V to paste the image in. So what you'll notice now is we have our first image on layer zero and our next image on layer one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a layer mask so that we can show only this part of our new image and get rid of everything else, which will allow us to see the hands from the first photo. So what you're gonna do is with your top layer selected, you're gonna click on add a layer mask. And then what this does is it adds this extra window here and it automatically adds it in white. Now what that means is that the entire layer is visible. In Photoshop, white means visible and black means hidden. So again, with this, with this layer selected, if I was to do a Command I to invert the layer, it becomes black, which means the entire layer is hidden. So just to show you again, white means the whole layer is showing and black means the whole layer is not showing. So I'm gonna keep it on black because what I wanna do is just brush in the hands on this photo. You could do it the other way around where you, you brush out everything else, but that's just a lot more work. So we're gonna do it this way. So now I've got my layer mask on black. I'm gonna come over to the brush tool by pressing B. And then what you wanna do is make sure that your brush is set to white, because what that's gonna do is add back in any areas of the layer that you brush over. Now, in terms of brush settings, I like to keep my flow around 30, the opacity to 100%, the blend mode to normal, and then this is the part that you wanna edit the most. So the size of the brush that you need will depend on the size of the photo that you are um, brushing over. In this case, the photo is full size, so I need my brush quite big. And I'm gonna keep the hardness around 10%, which means anything I brush in is gonna have a nice soft layer around it, so you don't see any sort of sharp shadows or anything as you're brushing. So now all I'm gonna to start to do is with this layer selected and my white brush, I'm gonna to start to paint over the area of the top layer that I want to show in my photo. And what you'll see as I do this is down here in the layer mask, you start to see the parts of the photo that you're making visible. So I'm just gonna carry on going with that and you wanna make sure that as you're brushing in hands, that if there's any shadow underneath, you wanna make sure you brush that in as well so that it looks realistic. Um, we don't want any floating hands in these photos. Cool. Okay, so that is where I'm gonna leave it for that one. So now what you'll see we've done is we've applied the second photo on top but we've masked out most of it and then we've just brushed in the area with my hands. So now we have a photo where mostly what you can see is layer zero and then you can see the part of layer one that we want to. So we're gonna just repeat that whole thing again with the final photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more new layer, come to my final photo, select the whole thing, copy it and then paste it into layer two. 
So now, because this one's on top and at the moment there's no adjustment layer, this is all we can see. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer mask. I'm gonna invert it by doing Command I to make it invisible. And then with my brush tool still selected, I'm gonna brush in my hands and the bottle on this side. Just keep going, make sure that you get all of it and any shadows that make sense. Okay, and that is it. So that's basically how you create a Photoshop composite. It's a very simple process. You don't need to use a hundred different tools in Photoshop. And it's something that you could do with as many layers as you want. So if you had a huge photo with a massive dining room table and you wanted to show someone's hands at every single seat, you can totally do that. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, this is a technique that I'm using over and over again in my food photography as I'm trying to try out different styles. Don't forget to download that PDF by clicking on the link in the description. If you're not subscribed already, hit that button, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you next time. Bye.